The concept that Viper anchors into is actually quite simple. The concept is loaded movement training. And what's interesting is that it's been conspicuously absent from most forms of training for some time. In order to illustrate this, what I've done is created a graph with two continuums. There's a vertical continuum and then there's a horizontal continuum. On the vertical continuum, we've got loaded on top, meaning external load to the body. And on the bottom, we've got unloaded, which sim simply means body weight. On the horizontal continuum, we've got linear movement on the left-hand side, and we've got transitional three-dimensional movement on the right-hand side. And what these two continuums form is four quadrants. Now, one thing that I should say right now is that each one of these quadrants represents a different style of training, but what we might argue is that each one of these quadrants is absolutely necessary and critical for the success of a well-balanced training protocol. So what we don't want to do is engage in this either-or type of discussion. We're not saying that one of these quadrants is better than the other. We're saying that they're different and they elicit different responses. So let's take a look at these quadrants in a little bit more detail. If I think about the upper left-hand quadrant, I'm loaded and I'm linear. And this represents your classic strength or resistance training. And there's been a lot of research over the years that has shown that resistance training in the classic sense has a, a, a large degree of adaptation that is positive and it is necessary for a lot of individuals to engage in certain levels of resistance training. If we're thinking about what effect it has on the bones as we age, what effect it has on the neuromuscular system, these are all beneficial things. And so the classic example would be a deadlift. If we're doing a deadlift pla uh, uh, pattern, a deadlift action as the classic example of loaded and linear actions, I would not load my body up with a deadlift of some measure, let's say it's 200 pounds, and three-dimensionalize that. That would be too much egregious load on the joints themselves, and it would disrupt the mechanics and put me in a, a way greater risk of injury uh, than if I was to keep it close to my body and I was to keep it linear. So we need to respect that this form of training would have the, the approach in a much more linear fashion and typically the weight is closer to my body so that I can manage it a little bit, a little bit better. So some benefits include time under tension, we're, you know, we're, we're teaching uh, the greater hypertrophy of the muscle because of the, the nature of the loading. So these are some benefits of to, the, to this upper left hand quadrant. If we move down to the lower left hand quadrant, now we're unloaded. So by and large, we are our own body weight. We're manipulating this mass, our own body weight, in a linear pattern. Examples of this would be a weak link activation or neural activation of an area of the body so that we can isolate it, so that we can integrate it later on. So a lot of therapeutic rehab processes involve unloaded and linear actions to restore the body's neuromuscular response, to mobilize the tissues in a certain way, to go through different protocols that would allow the individual to get back into function. And so this has its place with a well-balanced fitness protocol as well. If we move over and we look at the lower right hand quadrant, what we're going to look at is we're still unloaded, meaning it's my body weight, but now we're going to go through some transitional three-dimensional approaches. So for instance, SAQ type training, speed, agility, quickness type training is a great example. If I roll out a, a speed ladder and I give it to the fitness industry, 99% of the fitness industry is going to know what to do with this tool because of the concept that it represents and where it fits within a well-balanced protocol. So the inclusion of this type of exercise is going to demand a three-dimensional transitional approach where I can take my body weight in this example and go through the speed ladder. So now, now I'll be working on neurosensitivities, positional influence into the ground, a different ground reaction force. We're looking at all these types of adaptations that come into the biological form when it's introduced to this style of training. What we don't generally see, however, is the upper right-hand quadrant. That which speaks of the loaded, which is external load, and the transitional movement. 
And so this concept of loaded movement training really anchors into the authentic use of Viper. This is how it's designed to be used. This is why it was created, was to transition and move the body from point A to point B in a task-oriented way. So by taking a mass and manipulating movement in all three planes, we anchor into the theme of variability, motor variability and mechanical variability, and why that's so important for the tissues to access different speeds, different loads at different angles. We also speak about neurosensitivity, the idea of turning the muscle on and off, which is unique to this kind of quadrant. We're also talking about how we can load the viscoelastic tissue of the body, the muscles, the collagen fascia network, and even the skin in order that it receives the appropriate amount of load into the system and can return it back into the system in a very metabolically efficient way. So all of these benefits are uh, inherent within this upper right hand quadrant. But again, what we want to do is match our training to include each one of these quadrants so that we are able to get the positive adaptations for our clients and athletes so that we can get them closer towards their particular goals.